Thanks, guys. Just um, before we get started with the word this morning, Pastor Paul, if I can invite you just to come forward. Just in a prayer meeting this morning, Pastor Paul had this amazing vision, and I'm not going to try and share it because I won't do it justice to what it is that God uh, shared with him. And we've got this book where... Um, we had made up for words that have been spoken over our church and we've got a pile in my office that needs to be written in here uh, but this is displayed out in the cafe area and I got Paul to write in it this morning because it was seriously one of the most anointed visions I've ever heard communicated. Um, you missed out if you weren't at prayer meeting this morning so Paul would you mind just sharing again with us uh, what you saw yep. that God showed you? All right, I'll do my best. Um, Sometimes, you know, uh, God will give you a picture, yeah? And often we don't know what to do with that picture, particularly if it's in prayer or even in worship. And um, because we think, oh, what's God going to do with that? Anyway, I'll just share what I saw. I saw I saw some waves. It's pretty thematic for where we live, right? It's nothing special. I saw waves, but I saw the, the swell continuing to increase. And so this thought of that didn't go away for the time that we were praying out there. And uh, I thought, oh, I'm just going to put it out there. I'm going to share that I've seen some waves. All right. But then, see, something happens in the Spirit. Holy Spirit got on, on board with what he had obviously given me in a picture. And uh, so I just started sharing um, out of the natural from what I saw of these waves developing and then all of a sudden I just felt Holy Spirit quicken to me and says these are waves of awakening these are waves that are increasing uh, uh, wave upon wave as the swell increases the Holy Spirit is a sense was awakening a a um a new wave of healings across this city. And then this, these waves were actually down on our foreshore. So that's how I knew it was home. The waves were, were coming upon our beach. And the waves were, um, were, were uh, affecting everybody across this city, whether they're saved or unsaved alike. And so God is no respecter of persons in, in that sense that he doesn't discriminate whether we've got to know him yet or not. How else are the saved going to get saved? Saved. Often it's through a point of need. And this is what I saw Holy Spirit saying. I'm going to heal bodies uh, physically, uh the spirit, soul and body across this city to such a point there will be a new awakening where people in the streets will be falling to their knees because they've received a gift of grace from God for their healing that they've been crying out for for so long that it's just set them free that they could do nothing but fall to their knees and go the realisation, what must I do to be saved? Because this is a gift from God. And, and the body of Christ, which is you and I, we're awake to this, okay? And we're, we're seeing this happening in our streets and we were the ones to respond and getting alongside these yeah, people. Awesome. And some of them were us too, you know, <laughs> getting on. set free and getting healed yeah. and getting set free, okay? So the point was the body of Christ was in action showing, introducing these people to, to where the gift came from Amen. and is introducing them to Jesus. Hallelujah. So we declared that... And we yeah, got all on board you. with that as a prayer team, and so that's yeah, about that's it. Yeah, great. Isn't that so good? Huh? Like I said, I couldn't have done it justice. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just still ourselves before our King this morning. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you, Lord, for what it is that You've already done, the price price has already been paid, it is finished, the victory is already won. We thank you God for what you're doing in the hearts and lives of your people here and in our community and the wave that you're bringing. Get on board with that, we're excited for that Lord. And I hope I speak on behalf of everyone here when we say we are ready bring it on we are ready thank you jesus amen hallelujah well if you have been joining us each week you will see that um kerry is waving frantically up the back at me hi kerry can we just maybe after the service kerry yep that's okay we'll just leave it just for now yep um 
Are we put our sermon title up there? That'd be great. Thanks, Kerry. Thank you. So we're on the Soul, Se- Soul Surgeon series, the three S's. And if you've been joining us over the last few weeks, you would have heard my amazing wife speak um, for the last three weeks. Isn't she incredible? Like, yep, yeah, just... It is mind-boggling the way that the Holy Spirit reveals the word to her and she communicates it. Just does my head in. Um, oh, I'm so blessed that I get to live with that. <laughs> I have the best wife ever. Sorry, guys. Stop looking. You have to settle for second best. <laughs> okay, now we get way off topic. Um, God is good. I'm glad you're laughing because today we're going to talk uh, into a topic which I have not put um, a slide up there for. If you're going to label this message anything, it would be confronting the uncomfortable. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Taylor. <laughs> who wants to leave already? I know I did. <laughs> All right. uh, who wants to confront the uncomfortable? Isn't that the most uncomfortable thing to do? Uh, we don't like confronting the uncomfortable. Well, let's start in, Mar- in Matthew, hey, chapter 18. Kerry, I might just get you just to um, move slides along as I read. Um, let's all be upstanding for the reading of the scripture this morning in honour to our King Jesus. Uh, you don't have to read along with me. You can just let me read and stand there in awe of him if you like. Matthew 18, verse 21 to 35. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother and sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like... Don't you love it when he talks about the kingdom of heaven? It's like every time he says well, the kingdom of heaven is like, I just get excited. I'm like, oh, okay, this is going to be good. What is he going to say next? The kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began to settle, began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold, that's lots of bags of gold, isn't it? That's a lot to owe someone, was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, understandably, that's a lot of gold, um, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. He must have a fair bit of stuff, or his wife must be pretty good looking. Um, Anyway, at this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt. Doesn't even have to repay it. Literally cancels it for him and lets him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabs him and begins to choke him. Real nice guy. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused instead and went off and had the man thrown in prison until he could repay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called in the servant, You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled the debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In, his, in anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should repay back all he owed. This is the scary part. This is Jesus' words, not mine, right? This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sisters from your heart. You may be seated. Oof. You know, I heard this um, preacher once say, it was Francis Chan, if anyone wants to know. He's going, you know, if I had a church down the road from Jesus' church, my church would be bigger. And I went, oh, it's a bit harsh, Francis, what are you talking about? And he goes, no, the call that Jesus brings us to, the account that he calls us to, the level that he calls us to live our life to, no wonder why he drew a crowd but no one followed him. 
Because his standard is up here. And Francis is like, man, I, I, I'm still trying to work out what his standard is. Like it is so far beyond. You come to my church and, and I'll be so much more relaxed and cushy with you. But Jesus, man, his standard, his standard is up here if you want to follow him. Because my church would be heaps bigger than Jesus' church. It's kind of scary, isn't it, when you take that, um, that thought on board. You go, wow, yeah, you're right. Like if you sit under Jesus' teaching... When we, I've counseled people before that have gone through things and, and have, have said to my face, I, I just can't forgive them. I said, but don't you realise that if you can't forgive, Jesus can't forgive you? And they, they sit there in front of me and say, I'm okay with that. It just confuses me. I go, how can you be okay with this? Like the level of hurt and pain, they must be suffering themselves to go, well, if that's, if that's what Jesus is going to do, then, then that's just what Jesus is going to do because I just can't find it in myself to forgive them. What a horrible place to get to. So then we start unpacking that and what that looks like and we go deeper and hopefully get that person to a place where they can and realise where these hurts and pains and things actually come from, where they stem from. We can pray into those things and see them lifted off their lives and set free. And receive that healing and be able to, to, um, to forgive other people. You know, each one of us is forgiven. Who finds it easy to forgive themselves? Aren't we our own worst critics? Yet yeah, if we are forgiven and we struggle to forgive ourselves, does that make Jesus a liar? No, of course not. But it shows the importance of us grasping this reality of forgiveness. That we are forgiven, therefore we have to be able to forgive ourselves. We have to be able to receive his grace and his mercy. And when we muck up, out of our repentance of heart with our relationship with Christ, through that, we should be able to forgive ourselves. And if we can't, there's other underlying factors that are holding us back from being able to forgive ourselves. And, and, uh, and this is, I, I can see now, I've shared many times, God asks me to do things, I don't understand why I do them, then I just do them, and then later on he reveals to me why we're doing what it is that we're doing because he told me to do it. And we're at that point now where we're running out this emotional, healthy, spirituality course and now I can begin to understand why he's asking us to do this and go through and learn these skills about sitting with him and listening to what it is that Jesus is saying. Because quite often I'll ask people, well, they come to me with an issue or a situation, I'll say, well, what's Jesus saying? And the, the, usually the first thing out of their mouth is, oh, I don't know, I haven't asked Jesus yet. Don't we all do that? We're quick to be able to bring something to someone else, to be able to get it off our chest. But what's Jesus saying? That's literally the most important thing. What's Jesus saying? Because what Jesus is saying, that's everything. That's the answer to our problem. And if we can't grasp this, this level of forgiveness within ourselves, which we, look, we, we actually can't. We can't do it on our own, right? We literally can't do it on our own. That's why we need Jesus. It's not something we can attain ourselves, but we need Jesus. And we need to have this relationship with Jesus. And what this, this course does is it gives us tools and skills to be able to apply to our every day. And, and I've had the privilege of doing it twice. And, and now I've just got these things that are natural in my life where I'm just naturally spending time with him way more than I've ever, ever before. It's literally transformed my life. And my relationship with Jesus has just gone from strength to strength to strength to strength. And, and I want that for you guys. And now we're about to launch emotionally healthy relationships in term three. What a terrifying course. Just to put it out there. Right? Like I'm doing it at the moment. And I do relationships terribly. Wow. And I am just learning so, 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 so much. And I just keep seeing how far fallen short of everything that I am. And you just go, wow, God, your grace and your mercy is just next level. If you can, 
if you can work with me, that's brilliant. I really appreciate that because, gee, I need it. Wow. Did you know in Proverbs it says that um, it's a person's, a, a person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offence. Have you ever had that moment where someone's come and apologised you, to you for something and they feel really bad about it and you're like, oh, I didn't, I didn't even realise it. Like, just naturally, you overlook that offence. I had that happen before. I had this one, one instance not that long ago. Someone come into my office and they're just they're crying. They're like, I'm just like the most terrible person in the world. I, I can't believe I treated you this way. And I've just gone, oh, I didn't even realise. <laughs> And then I realised that, oh, in my maturity, in my wisdom, in my, in my relationship with Jesus, I've grown to a place where maybe that one day would have really offended me and hurt me, but I, didn't, I just knew that wasn't them. So to me, it was a non-event, but to them, they had to come and apologise because to them, it was actually there was something in their heart that they knew that they had not done that was honourable. So they came and they repented. I'm like, great, fantastic. Let's keep going. Wonderful. You know, and now back iron sharpening iron and we'll run the race again. It's a beautiful thing. But how do we get to that place where we can overlook an offence? Because overlooking an offence isn't just, oh, what you did to me there really hurt. Let me just squash that down and move on with life. That's not overlooking an offence. That's taking on the, the offence, living in the offence, not showing that offence to anybody. That, that's not what this pa- passage is talking about whatsoever. Right? This is talking about in our maturity in him, that it literally becomes a non-event. There is no hurt, there is no pain. And, and that doesn't happen all the time. There will be moments still, it doesn't matter how mature you become, there will be moments. I remember saying one stupid thing one time, right? When I'm a young Christian, um, probably like five years ago, um, <laughs> And um, when I was a one-year-old Christian, 25 times. Um, and, uh, and I said to someone, oh, I, I just don't get offended. Like, they were having a go at me. I'm like, go for it. I don't get offended. Give it your best. Guess what? I walked away offended. <laughs> but I went back to Scripture. I'm not meant to get offended. I'm meant to be full of grace and mercy and love and peace and joy. That's not meant to be who I am. I'm not meant to be this person that gets offended. And I told him I don't get offended. So now I can't get offended over that. No, no, that's totally wrong. I still have feelings. God made me with feelings. God made you with feelings. We can say things to each other that hurt. It's okay to acknowledge those things. It's healthy to acknowledge those things. And through this Emotionally Healthy Relationships course, we're going to learn as a church family how to lovingly, the, the biggest key, the, the key of all things is love. Right? Paul says that you can have every gift under the sun but not have love and you've got nothing. You missed out. You've, you've completely lost it. You've got absolutely zilch. Love is the most important thing. So we're going to work as a family on how can we communicate better. Through love, through, through these skills and, and there's role play. I hate role plays, right? Uh, this is my least favourite thing to do in the world. Now, and also, if you ever he- hear me use the word hate, it's because I really, really, really don't like it. I tell my kids all the time, don't use hate. It does not qualify using that word. Like, there's only that word is set aside for just some little tiny things that really tick you off. Role plays is one of those things for me <laughs> that I will allow that word to be used in my vocabulary because I do not like role plays. Right, so in this, when we when we launch this course, we're going to encourage you to do it as couples, do it with people that you've got relationship. We want you to pair up to do this together, because, and we also want you to have done the emotionally healthy spirituality course, because all the things you learn in that will be your foundation for this. If you if you just do this, you're going to miss a whole heap, and it's not going to be anywhere near as as effective. Um, and a huge shout out to Michael and Karen who are running this emotionally healthy spirituality at the moment. You guys are amazing, right? They give up their Sunday to come and teach this uh, it's just brilliant like we just love and, and just thank you so much for that because you're having a huge impact in people's lives thank you really really just want to honor you guys um, and, and we need more leaders to run this because there's so many people wanting to do it we just don't have the leaders to run it and I wish I could do everything and just clone myself because I, I just want to run another one but if I run another one then I can't learn the other one and you know what it's like it's just like yeah I just can't do it all 
So if you're interested, if you've done the course and, and you want to lead it, please come and talk to me because there's opportunity. We've got another one coming up um, starting in a few weeks' time on a Friday, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Um, and we've got a whole bunch of people interested in that one as well, which is really, really exciting. But the thing is that we need to get better at doing relationship. We need to get better at communicating. Um, David Guzak, I think he's how you pronounce his name, says a wise man or woman knows when they have been forgiven much, that they have been forgiven much, and this shapes how they deal with others. When we get that revelation of how much we have personally been forgiven, it's so much easier to forgive others. They don't act as if they must hold everyone to account for every transgression. Now, transgression, if you don't know what that is, it's just like when someone's done something wrong. When you expected them to do something and they did something else. That's really what a transgression is, right? They broke a rule or an agreement that you had or something like that. Um, but, you know, but they know when to overlook a transgression. I think that's an excellent way of putting it. Um, and that's really where we're going to be going next as a church, which is really, really exciting. It's been so good to see what, um, what God's already been doing through this whole year. Who's heard the saying before, God won't give you more than you can handle? What a load of bollocks. <laughs> Who made up that stupid comment? <sighs> Have they not read this book? I'm pretty sure the person that made that up has not read this book. Actually, where they get this from is from 1 Corinthians 10, where Paul is saying, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with temptation, he will also provide a way out of escape that you'll be able to endure it. It's talking about temptation. All before that, it's talking about like sexual immorality and lusts and, 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 and slander and all this. Sort of, it's, just, it's literally talking about temptation. God will put you through more than you can handle because he needs you to rely on him. He does it with everyone in scripture. <laughs> that is just the biggest lie. Let's not believe that. And let's not be people that reiterate that and go and say that to others. Let's actually get alongside each other when we have got more than we can bear and help shoulder that load together. Pray with one another. Again, ask that question. Oh, what's Jesus saying about that? That should be our first, our first point of, of reference all the time. What's Jesus saying about that? Sometimes we have the wisdom to let things go and sometimes we actually need to work through stuff. We need to work through disappointment, um, hurt, loss, grief. Situations that we don't yet have the wisdom just to be able to let go and that's okay. It's all part of growing. right? Everyone goes through it. It's exactly the same for each one of us. Jesus said to us to first love God then love others. Love God, love others. This has just been this resounding thing that's just constantly going through my head all the time. Uh, much like Gabriel shared over communion, I also have been in places of recent where people are just throwing lies at me of things that they say I've done which I have not done. Bringing up things, making stuff up, and accusing me of things that I haven't... And I've been so... My heart has been so for them... And somehow, because of whatever's going on in their life, they have twisted it that I'm against them. I just go, what? How is this even possible? And when you get these fiery darts thrown at you, what do you do? You put up your shield of faith. And you go, I'm not going to let them hit me. Love God, love others. Love God, love others. Love God, love others. Continue. As Christians... The enemy will use any way possible to try and bring us down, throw slander in our face, throw, t get people talking about us behind our back. Uh, all this horrible stuff that is going on to drag us down. Get that shield of faith up, guys. Don't let it. Don't let it wound you. We're going to talk about some wounds in a minute. Right. How, so then how do we love others when they just seem to tick us off all the time? Right. Five years ago, I'm just completely honest here, right? Probably shouldn't be this honest, but I am. I regret it afterwards, I usually do. Just putting it out there for the camera so I remember. <laughs> Five years ago, I really struggled to like people. Because people just kept ticking me off all the time. I'm like, God, this is terrible. 
I really like young people, because young people don't tick me off. And look at all of them. We've got like 16 of them down here jammed into two rows. They are just amazing, these guys. Uh, this is why we love having youth on a Saturday night, because then it's really easy for them to remember to come to church the next day. <laughs> uh, if we did it another night, they'd forget. Like, there'd be two or three of them, they'd come with family, and that'd be it. <laughs> but I just love young people. Everyone else just ticks me off. It's not the case now. Okay, it's not, I've grown. Right? <laughs> I really have. Uh, and and I've, just, I've just been crying out to God, God, give me your love for your people. Show me what it is to genuinely love people. I want your heart for people and I want to love like you love. And because that's all that matters. If we can love each other well and we can communicate, uh, communicate well, then I think we'll just go on fire for Jesus and, and lives will be transformed and changed. So how do we get past this point of people just ticking us off? I'm not going to ask for a raising of hands of who gets ticked off by anyone um, because I already know you all do. Just for the fact that you laughed at me. Okay? <laughs> Is loving someone just throwing all your words at them when you've got an issue and they can just take it the way they want? Because I've got an issue and, and you just need to know about it so I'm just going to blurt it all out. You just take it any way you want. That's not love. There is no love in that. That is just all self, 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 self. I need to get this off my chest. I need to tell you what you did wrong. Or how you should have done this. Take it any way you want. There's no love in that, is there? None whatsoever. No, that's definitely not how we love people. Is loving someone putting passive-aggressive posts up on social media to get your point across. (laughs) It's really not, is it? Right? But we see them all the time. Because people are struggling. How do I communicate this? Well, maybe this is what I'll do. Mm. There, take that. Yeah. That's not loving anyone. It's funny from, you know, if you're not the one that's being targeted. For sure. Is loving someone that um, not saying anything at all because I've got nothing nice to say. Who's heard that before? I used to tell my kids, if you haven't got anything nice to say about them, don't say anything at all. It's really because I just want them to shut up and not, not, just stop talking. That's really what it was. I didn't actually mean that. That's because I was reflecting on that comment and I'm going, what a stupid thing to say to someone. If you've got nothing nice to say, then don't say anything at all. That just shuts down your feelings and emotions, doesn't it? And it says you're not allowed to feel. You're not allowed, not allowed, your feelings and emotions don't count. That's really what that statement is saying. But they do count. God gave you those feelings. God gave you those emotions. How do we healthily unpack this so we can communicate well, lovingly to one another? And look, there's so many instances that you might be able to get together with some friends that you had an issue with someone and you, you pray and you seek God together and God says, go and do this. So you're like, great, let's go and do that. You meet with that person and it's a disaster. And you go, what just happened? That's not, but God told us, and, but it's not received. Ah, oh, I've learned something. Ben prayed this morning in true worship about generations and in speaking generationally over us as a church. Did you know that when we learn these habits of our communication, they often come from our parents or our family environment, the way we communicate? And then they learn from their parents. And they learn from their parents. It's a generational thing. It's just generation upon generation upon generation upon generation. We want to turn that around to go this way with forge Jesus. So we're being more like Jesus in every generation. So the way that your parents maybe communicated to you was maybe you weren't allowed to have a voice and your feelings and emotions didn't matter. And they did say to you, if you've got nothing else to say, don't say anything at all because you, what you're saying does not matter. You're not allowed to feel that. So you've, you've buried that. You're going, okay, so when I now communicate and you get married, how do you communicate then your feelings? Maybe you go to being passive-aggressive. You know, I didn't even know what being passive-aggressive was until I got married. (laughs) My wife has taught me so many things. 
says, do you realise how passive aggressive you are? I'm like, no. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> and then she explained it to me. I'm like, oh yeah, I do that all the time. <laughs> Why shouldn't I do that? <laughs> no, it's a terrible way of communicating. Oh, is it? It's just how I grew up. My great parents, though, they were loving, they were fantastic, but they didn't deal with issues. We weren't allowed to talk about stuff. When stuff come up, it was swept under the carpet. No, no, put on a happy face, let everyone see that we're happy. They weren't Christians. And, and you see it now with people on social media. Let's post the, the best times. All the family favourites, all the great stuff goes out on social media. Look how wonderful my life looks. Sweep everything else under the carpet. When the real social media is going on upstairs in heaven, Jesus sees it all. He sees everything. Generations upon generations. Let's be a church that changes the generations on how we communicate. Let's be a church that, that realises that, okay, I definitely haven't got it all together, but I'm going to strive towards it. I'm going to learn. I'm going to keep applying myself. I'm going to give up um, stuff during the week that I can go and attend these sorts of things to actually grow in my relationship with Jesus. Help grow the church. Help grow the body. Grow in love. Grow in all the things that truly matter for eternity. can lead us to undealt issues that just compound and just fill our rubbish bin if we don't address stuff. If we just constantly push things down all the time, we get to... No, you can leave that there. I'm just coming down here to join you guys. We can have an altar call and go, right, who's got some hurts that they need dealt with? Yep, everyone's just like, Jesus set me free, sitting down here at church. Oh, yeah, that's me. I'm coming. Here I come. I've got all my hurts, actually. It's a couple from this morning. And I'm just going to lay them down at the altar. And here's that one from when, I, when they welcomed me this morning. And they were just really rude. And here's the one from what the pastor said before. I'm just going to lay those hurts and offences down at the altar. And just, Jesus, oh, oh, I feel so free and light. And he's done a miracle and I'm healed. Fantastic. Church is over. Let's go. <laughs> Isn't that what it's like? We often, we don't leave it at the altar because we actually don't know how to deal with this stuff. So it just fills up and then we just compact it and we're like, oh, how much more can I fit in there until I explode? When really we're meant to leave them at the altar, but just saying, how how do I leave something at the altar when it's it's a feeling, it's an emotion, it's a hurt, it's a pain. Those things don't just drop off you when you come up here unless Jesus does an absolute miracle, right? And he does. He does it time and time again. And we've heard so many testimonies through this series about people being healed. Don't pick him up and walk out with him again. That's not what it's for. You're meant to leave your rubbish. But then the question is, how do I leave something that still hurts? Have we communicated our hurts? Do we know how to do it safely? Do we know how to do it in love? Because there's a fair chance that when we go and communicate our hurts, we do it through the filter and the lens of what we have been taught, either from our culture or our background or our families or our school. Schools, sorry for teachers here, schools are the worst place in the world for developing, um, uh, for crushing kids in regards to who they are. And what they are allowed to think and who they are allowed to be. Sorry, Andrew. Not having a go at you whatsoever or any other teachers here. I'm not. Going from personal experience and from experience of my children and experience of their friends, of schools dragging kids down, squashing them. Um, and, and, and then they come out with these... I really feel like I'm having a dig at schools at the moment. Probably am, but... Don't mean to be that way. But when they come out with these programs, they go, we're going to do this wellness thing. It's going to be all wonderful and fantastic. You're dealing with a bunch of damaged, hurt kids that don't want to talk to anyone because you've already crushed them. So these programs, they just literally don't work because the poor kid's already crushed. He doesn't know. What he needs, he needs Jesus. That's what he needs. And, and with Jesus, to learn how to communicate 
And, and we need exactly the same thing. We are these people that f- from a young age have been crushed. We've been like this beautiful ball that we were born and then squashed into just nothing. And it's not going to pop for me now. <laughs> anyway, I had another one there, but now I've lost it. I think I buried it. Anyway, it pops. Bang! All right, it's deflated. And that's who we become. And then we go, how do we fill that back up with air again? Because we, we walk around with all these wounds from a young age and then we use those to take into our next conversations about how we deal with stuff. And while our heart might be right to, to restore that relationship or, or talk about those hurts and things, we often end up hurting more people. So then we go, it's better that I just say nothing at all. No, it's terrible when you say nothing at all because then you're just like, how much more stuff can I fit in here? Right? And then you will explode because that's how we're created. We're designed that way that if we don't deal with our stuff, it will get to a point, you can, it's only so long you can squash it for. There's only so much that fits in. And then, boom, breakdown. And then it's through counselling and everything else that you've got to go through. And we're going to take you right back to the childhood stuff to, to work out where these things come from. Because, you know, has anyone received healing in an area and then it comes up again years later and you go, but I thought I dealt with that. And then the whole, it seems to be a whole other layer. Like, what's with that? It's because, again, the generational thing is from, from years and years and years and years of different things building to that one thing that just made it explode and those things were never dealt with. And we dealt with one, but we didn't know there were 10 more layers that needed to be dealt with. Until we get to those layers, then we experience real freedom. And that's what God's got for us. He's got freedom for every single one of us. But we need to learn how to communicate well, that we don't hurt each other, that when we do communicate, we build each other up and love one another. You know, because it can be like, and, and look, we have best intentions. <coughs> and you've got um, these fiery darts that I brought in. All right. Who wants to come and hold one of these for me? Anyone? <laughs> Just going to bring that over there so we're in camera view. Right, you can have the best intentions. Often we do have the best intentions. Often we don't want to hurt people, do we? And we don't want people getting hurt and offended with what we say. We, and we want to have the freedom to be able to bring stuff up. And it's healthy to bring stuff up. And when we do it in an unhealthy way, then people get hurt. And then we go, oh, what's the point? You're just better off saying nothing at all. And no, you're not better off saying nothing at all. That's the worst thing you can do. Um, I'm just going to use one of those. And we have our person, and um, here we go. I brought in five just in case, so arrows that I might miss. Entirely possible that I miss. And we go, and we go talking about situation. Oh, sorry, I'm playing you. <laughs> Oops. Edit that from the camera. <laughs> oh dear. We can get to a place where. We have a frustration or a hurt or an offence or anything like that and, and we're quick to go and talk about it with someone else. If that person then challenges us to go and actually speak to the person about it, we go, no, I don't want to because I've spoken to people about stuff in the past and they just get offended more and it ruins a relationship. It's better that I just bury it. But the problem is, is then we take on that offence and then from time and time and time again, someone else happens to, we can then relate because we've got that and it's not dealt with. And then you get a pool of people that have all got this offence group going on where they're taking on second, third offences from each other and they're just talking about it. The problem is in the spiritual realm is when we're getting together and talking about it, this is what's happening. We're firing darts at each other in the spirit and we don't see the wounds that happen. And I'm terrible at this, by the way. I said to Ava, you need to come and do this for me. She's like, no, Dad, I'm not doing it. (laughs) There we go. I'm much better with a gun. (laughs) That's a whole other story. But you can see that what goes on in the spiritual realm 
is when we're talking about each other behind people's backs and we might have the best intentions. We might, we might want healing. We might, we might want restoration. But when we don't do anything about it, these arrows are just flying at people in the spiritual realm. And it's dragging people down. It's not building anyone else up. And we need to be a people that build one another up. But we can't build one another up unless we know how, to, how well to communicate. How to communicate well. Let me get my words right. Let me use words. Is loving someone sharing your offence with everyone else but them? And often, often we do it, don't we? Because we want some wisdom on how do we deal with this. We want to know how to do this right. And we have had many instances where we've had to deal with people and, and you want your heart to be right the whole time and unfortunately that person walks away and they're just so hurt. And you go, but I never intended that whatsoever. And now, learning what I'm learning about communication, I go, I communicated terribly. I was the problem here. My heart was right, but gee, I communicated so bad. And then I, now I can see these patterns through my family, through my family's family, on how they communicate, which I've picked up, and then I've just, naturally, that's the way I communicate. And it's no wonder why I'm hurting people. And I go, man, this course is amazing. As much as I hate, it's one of those love-hate relationships, you know, where you just, you hate doing the practical sides, but you outwork the practical and you go, oh, this is amazing, it's fantastic. And, uh, and it does, it really helps. And, and you're not going to do the... Full disclaimer, you're not going to do the course once and then be radically transformed for the rest of your life. It's a constant outworking. And you've got to change some mindsets. You've got to change some generational mindsets because when you get back in your family environment with your parents or your grandparents, guess how they still communicate? You're probably going to fall back into those ways of communicating because you're in that environment. You know, when you're, become, when you're in that environment, that's what you become like who you hang around, don't you? So you naturally fall back into that. So we've got to be strong and go, no, I don't, I don't communicate that way. Let me be inquisitive in the way I ask pe people things. Um, Andrew's a great one to catch up with. Like, when we go on our walks and things, he's a really, really curious guy. He communicates in such an amazing way which he's learnt through his, um, his work, on how can I discover really what's in your heart here, Tim, and why you might have said what you said in the way that you said it. And full credit to the guy. He's a top mate. He's a top bloke. Love the way he applies what he has learnt. And it has grown our relationship. And I just feel like every time we catch up, it just, our relationship just grows and grows and grows. And now I'm learning to be curious as to what Andrew's saying. <laughs> And doing, uh, and it's in a it's in a non-threatening way, and it, it's actually because we know that we one we've got each other's back, but we're building each other up, and we want to be able to ask the difficult questions, but we want to ask them in a loving, building up way that doesn't tear anyone down, and I just go, oh, this is fantastic, so I'm looking forward to rolling out this course next term. I uh, hope I'm getting you all excited about it, especially those um, that love acting. Um, you can't act in this, all right? It's not acting, you could be re real. Matthew 12, 18, 20 says, For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. Jesus is talking about when there, specifically in this passage of scripture, he's saying when there's fights and quarrels and, and issues going on, guess where I am? I'm right there. So let me just put this to you. Next time you're thinking about talking about someone with someone, guess who's right there with you? You're going to talk about like your brother or sister or God's son or daughter like that in front of him? Yeah, that's convicting, isn't it? Yeah, no wonder we're not to let an unwholesome word come out of our mouth. Ah, oh, we're going to. Let's just be real, right? But let's, let's be better. Let's want to be better. Let's do better. Let's be better. Proverbs 18.21 says that the, the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat of its fruit. Let's be people that build each other up.
Let's learn to communicate from generation to generation. Let's not be people that push our feelings down and somehow, I don't know where Christians learn, like this is beyond me, but they learn to put on this face that everything's okay. Oh, everything's okay. Everything is fine. When everything is not fine, everything is terrible. And they put on this face, no, everything is fine. Everything is great. Everything is dandy. Because that's how I'm meant to be. No, we are people with emotions and with feelings and we need to learn how to communicate them and communicate them well in a way that build each other up. And I'm so super excited about term three. If you can't tell already. (laughs) Have you heard uh, about the blind leading the blind? Guess where they end up? In a ditch. It's like that when we get together with someone and we go, right, how are we going to fix this issue we've got with this person? And um, we really have no idea. So you've got two blind people leading each other and, of course, it's going to end up in disaster. But when we invite Jesus in, when we equip ourselves with teachings on how do we communicate better, then we will be less likely to bring an offence. We will be less likely to hurt people. We'll be less likely, and we'll be able to deal with some of this stuff. We'll be able to get to a place, and it's going to happen. We're going to get to a place where we just go, I'm leaving it, Jesus. I've talked about it. I've dealt with it. I've spoken with those people. Yep, it still hurts a little bit, but it's out there now. It's out there. It's happening, and I'm leaving it at the altar. And I'm free. And we begin building each other up. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5 says, Therefore encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. I know that many of us here are building each other up and encouraging each other all the time. Let's continue to be those people if I can have the band come up. We can be a generation that breaks the dysfunction in Jesus' name of relationships, on unhealthy relationships. We can be a generation that shows the world who Jesus is because of how well we love one another. We can be a church that loves so greatly that the world looks at us and goes, oh my goodness, who are these people? In fact, other churches will go, oh my goodness, these guys are amazing. Look at them. They are the the level that we need to aspire to because we are loving world. Isn't that what we're called to do? Let's learn to communicate lovingly, honourably, compassionate, with merciful hearts, with non-judgmental spirits. Let's be those people. There's a new emotionally healthy course coming starting Friday for the 1st, uh, at 1 o'clock rather, the 5th, not Friday the 1st, because I don't even know when the Friday the 1st is. But Friday the 5th of July, so a few weeks' time at 1 o'clock, registration is now open for that session. That's um, Marion's going to be leading that. Um, and um, it's going to be amazing. Um, if that's something that fits your time frame and you'd like to be part of it, we don't want anyone to miss out. Uh, I know there's some people here that struggle to read. Um, I'm working on, for Term 3 running a, a, a session for those that have a, either a learning disorder or a reading issue where we can get an audio book and we can go through this stuff together. Okay, so um, I'm, gonna, I, I'm just putting everything into this because I'm seeing the fruit from it. Right? This is just so, so important that we are on the same page as a church. And then we have Emotionally Healthy Relationship Part 2 beginning in Term 3. Again, we really encourage everyone to do Emotionally Healthy Spirituality before doing the relationships thing because it will set you up for success and that's what we want to see. Not because we want to go, oh, this is how many people we put through the course. It's totally irrelevant, right? It's about seeing these principles set up and in place. And, and it's stuff that we, we hear about in church, but often get, we forget about. And I encourage it, if you've already done the course, do it again in your own time before the next one starts. Do it again. You've still got time. Get started on it. Go through those principles again. And I, I trust that you're applying those things every day to your life. 
But we're now starting our um, staff meetings on a, on a Friday morning with two-minute silence. Before God, we still ourselves before God. Our meetings, when we get together now, we're implementing this throughout the whole church. When we get together, we start in silence. Because we want to still ourselves before, because life is so busy. We want to still ourselves before our King and prepare to hear from Him. Not out of a religious thing, out of a relationship thing. God, I'm drawing near to you now. I'm just going to sit here and ponder how amazing you are before we get started. It's transforming our lives and it's going to transform our community. I'm so ridiculously excited. Will you join with me this morning as we just sing His praises? If you need prayer after the service, please go to someone here. Go to a friend, get them to pray for you. If you have unresolved things going on and you want to know how to deal with them, please get involved in this emotionally healthy stuff because it is life-changing. I'm so excited. Pete, I call him Pete, the guy that runs the, uh, does the course, Peter Scazzaro, says it takes seven years to see a change in your church from once you start this. I'm like, I don't want to waste seven years. But I can see why, because it's all this generational stuff that we have to deal with. But I believe we're already beginning to see a change. We haven't even done it for a year yet. And we're seeing a change in people's lives. We're seeing a change in the way people are living. We're seeing a change. And when this relationship course comes out, we're going to look silly in front of each other doing these things. But we're going to be changed. And we're going to be better. We're going to be more like Christ. And isn't that the end result that we all want? Hallelujah. Guys, would you take us out with a song?